geostatic. Okay, geostatic stresses. The typical situation for geostatic stresses looks like this. Here's the ground surface, right? And the ground surface is underlain by different layers. So we may have something like this, right? Let's say two layers. So this could be a sand. This, let's say it's a clay, right? And then down here we have rock. So we have different thicknesses, right? This could be, for example, eight meters. This would be 10 meters, for example. Okay? And so, uh, let's see, we can say that there, the water table is here. Um, let's say this is 3 meters from the ground surface. Okay? And we could say that the sand has a unit weight of 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed when it's dry, and let's say 20 kilonewtons per meter cubed when it's saturated. So we would say that the gamma or unit weight for the sand from this point here upwards is 18 and from this point here downwards or this level downwards elevation let's say is 20. Okay because we assume that at this point in time we're going to assume that the soil above the water table is dry even though it may be moist. Okay. So, uh, for the clay layer, we could assume that the gamma, in this case, of course, it's saturated because the water table is up here, right? Let's say it's 22 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Okay? So, the question is, what is the geostatic stress here, right? Now, that is an incomplete question because we, have, we realize that stress acts at a point, right? Stress acts... Stress, uh, sorry, stress, uh, stresses act or a stress acts at a point. So we need to define a point or find a point here to complete our problem. So let's say that we have a point, uh, let's begin with something simple. So let's say that we have something like this, point A, and point A is a distance 2 meters from the ground surface. Okay. All right, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Okay, now, the question is, first of all, is, the stress at, is there any stress at point A? The answer is yes, of course, because the point is submerged in a soil. It is actually submerged in the dry soil, in the dry sand at this point, right? Two meters, the water table is at three. So this one is submerged at a point in the soil that is not saturated, it's dry. So there is stress acting at that point. We need to find those stresses, we'll do that in a second. That's the first question. Um, the second one is, and this is a very important one, are there more than one stress acting at this point? And the answer is yes. In fact, there is an infinity of stresses acting at that point, and we'll understand a little bit more what that means later on when we do a little bit more of a complex problem, okay? Now, the general question that we typically ask for a case like this is what is the vertical stress, okay? What is the vertical stress? Now, when we say vertical stress, we imply that there is a plane, right, on which the stress acts, just like the example of the box, right? So if we say vertical stress, we're basically saying that the stress acts in the vertical direction. Now, if we imply that this stress, or if we say that this stress is a sigma, or a normal stress, which we typically ask that question, right, what is the vertical normal stress, okay, then there must be a plane that is perpendicular to this stress at this point on which this stress acts. So the way we do things in engineering, and you have seen this before, is we take the point and we draw it as an element. Okay? And that's kind of uh, an abstraction and that's, this confuses students because a point shouldn't have sides, right? A point is a point which is infinitesimally small. 
but to be able to visualize it, like we do in calculus, for example, we need to take that point and draw it big. It doesn't have any size, but we have to give it a size so that we can actually look at it in the paper, right? Now, so here's point A. Now, we are asking again, what is the vertical stress at this point? Well, the vertical stress acts at this point in the vertical direction, right? So we could draw it like this, or we could draw it like this. It's the same one. Sometimes people get confused and think that there are two stresses here. No, this is just one stress that acts on one point, right? Now, another confusion that may arise is, well, what happens between this line and this line, right? Well, this line and this line are the same line, and that's confusing. So I'll say it again. This is a point, therefore it has no size. Therefore, this line and this line are the same line. The reason why they are different here in this page is because we need to draw it like this so that we can understand what's going on in the paper, right? But in reality, there is no size to this point because a point has no size. Okay, back to the question. What is this vertical stress? Well, here's the plane, right? Remember, this plane is the same as this plane. In fact, sometimes I particularly prefer to draw it like this, okay? Because it's, it's just a plane that, that uh, passes through the point. It's this plane right here. That is the horizontal plane. So the vertical stress, this one, which is the same as this one, they are, they are one, right? Acts on this plane, on the horizontal plane. So how do we calculate this stress? given all the parameters that we have here. Okay, let's keep that in the back of our mind. And let's go back to fluids. Okay, so let's say we have a tank full of water. Here's a point, right? And this point is a distance of, I don't know, six meters from the, that's a big tank. But in any case, there's, here's the point, it's six meters from the ground, from not the ground, the, from the water level, okay? It's just a tank of water. So the question is, what is the pressure at this point? Well, this is very simple, right? Because the pressure, let's call it P at this point, will then define it as U. But let's, for now, let's talk about it as P. The pressure is equal to the unit weight of water, times the pressure head, 6 meters, right? So this is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube times 6 meters, which is basically 60 kPa. Now notice <clears throat> that what we have done is we have taken the fluid that is on top of the point, those 6 meters, and multiplied that by the gamma of the material. The material is water. And that gives us a stress. Well, you may say, no, that's a pressure. Yeah, it is a pressure. But you have to realize that pressure and stress are related. In fact, pressure is a stress. It's a special stress. <clears throat> pressure is a sigma. Okay? A pressure is a normal stress. The reason why we don't call it stress and we give it a special name pressure is because at that point, Let's call this one point B. At that point, the stress on every plane is the same. So all these sigmas, you see this vertical sigma that acts on the horizontal plane, this horizontal sigma that acts on the vertical plane, this slanted sigma that acts on that plane. In fact, there's infinity sigmas, right? All those sigmas have the same magnitude. Okay, so sigmas are equal, therefore we call that sigma pressure. We don't use that for soil, sorry, let's go back here. We don't use that for soil because the stress that acts vertically at a point and the stress that acts horizontally at the point are typically different and that leads to some complications that we will talk about later. Okay, so let's go back to the water. The point here is that we have taken the material 
we know the unit weight of it, and we have multiplied that unit weight times this, the length or height of material above the point. And that gives us pressure, which is in fact a sigma. So that gives us the stress at this point. But we never say the stress imposed by water, we say the pressure, right? Because again, pressure is a, 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 a pressure is a special sigma because it has the, the characteristic that at a point, all the sigmas, right, that act in every direction, all directions, they are the same amplitude or magnitude. Therefore, we give the, this sigma special name, pressure. Okay? Now, let's go back then to our example with the profile. So what happens here? Remember the question was, what is the vertical stress? Here's the point, here's the horizontal plane on which the stress acts, right? The question is, what is the vertical stress? So what we can do is adopt the fluids concept and say, well, the stress is equal to these two meters of material times the unit weight of the material above the point and that unit weight is 18 or 20? Well, it's 18 because remember that this material is dry, right? So 2 times 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed and this would be 36 kV. So that is the stress that acts vertically, of course, on the horizontal plane. Okay, so there's something very important that we have to say here, at this point. We have to modify a little bit or add some, something to our definition of stress. Not definition, but our characteristic for stress, right? Stress, we said that stress acts at a point, right? And that is true. As you can see, for example, this one, this stress acts at a point. This is a point, right? That's this point here. So, stress acts at a point, but it's important to realize that that point is on a plane, right? And that stress acts in a direction that is normal, for example, for the case of sigma, normal or perpendicular, to the plane. So it's important to know that the stress acts, acts at a point, and that point is on a plane, and the stress acts essentially at the point on the plane. Okay, just like in this case here. 